And I want to particularly thank Senator Olympia Snow for both the political courage and the seriousness of purpose that she's demonstrated throughout this process. Before today, Senator Olympia Snow was kind of sort of beltway famous as the only Republican willing to consider voting for health reform. Today, when she announced she would, in fact, cast the first and only Republican vote for reform, according to an account in the New York Times, Senator Snow, quote, silenced the PAC committee room and riveted colleagues on both sides. And that is when she became famous, famous, getting a very flattering political presidential shout out and landing two spots on the top 10 Google Google Trends list, where she was briefly number one, even beating out the NFL power rankings. But most importantly, she got a metaphorical seat at the negotiating table. Senator Snow made it very clear that just because she's voting for this particular version of health reform in the Finance Committee doesn't mean she's voting for any old health reform on the Senate floor. There are many, many miles to go in this legislative journey. My vote today is my vote today. It doesn't forecast what my vote will be tomorrow. In other words, if Democrats really want that one coveted Republican vote in the Senate, they're going to have to work with that one coveted Republican senator. So how does a soft-spoken, moderate senior senator from the 40th most populous state in the country become one of the most influential voices in health reform? And who exactly is Olympia Snow? And how does her incredible personal story play into making her the most prominent people, one of them, in the health reform debate? Here to talk about it is Bill Nemitz, columnist for the Portland Press Herald and Maine Sunday Telegram. He has followed Senator Snow's career for three decades and spent a couple of days with her on Capitol Hill just last week. Mr. Nemitz, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Nice to be here, Allison. Olympia Snow has a very interesting personal story that might inform us about the way she behaves as a senator. Can you fill us in on her upbringing? Well, she was born in Augusta and her, was orphaned at a fairly young age, age nine, and uh, was then raised by an aunt and uncle in a mill town in central Maine. So she, she's certainly not a woman of privilege, and she grew up in a very tightly knit Greek Orthodox community uh, in Auburn, Maine, and uh, you know comes from, from very genuine roots. Uh, later in her life, when she was in her 20s, her husband was a state legislator. He was killed tragically in a uh, car accident, and it was that vacant seat uh, which Olympia Snow filled after her husband's death that launched her political career. So she's known her share of tragedy. Does her vote today give us any indication on how she may vote on the final bill or whether she would at least side with Democrats in favor of cloture? Her vote today, I think, is just what she said it is. Mm. She's been very close to the vest about how she's going to go on these things. And uh, even up until late last week, was not tipping her hand on this vote. So I think when she says she's going to take this one day at a time, one vote at a time, uh, she's to be taken at her word on that. There's a lot that's going to happen between now and then. Will her vote have any influence on her fellow senator from, Col from Maine, Susan Collins? Hard to say. I would I would doubt it at this point. She really does seem to be that lone Republican out there who's willing to cross the aisle and give at least a bipartisan tint to this thing. I suppose if other Democrats started to break ranks, I would certainly expect Susan Collins to be among them, but certainly there's no indication of that right now. So I think this is a uh, solo flight for Olympia Snow. We mentioned that you spent a couple of days with her on Capitol Hill last week. How intense was the pressure on her from all the outside sources, Democrats, Republicans, even the White House? She tends at times like this to sh uh, shield herself from all of that by becoming completely, and I mean completely, immersed in the data, the sure. reports. For example, last week, the CBO report. She really has a tendency to lose herself in uh, information. And I think she does that for two reasons. One, of course, is to inform herself and to probably be one of the better informed senators at the table when these things come to committee vote. And also to give her some kind of of uh, respite or shelter, if you will, from a lot of the political winds that mm -hmm. are flying around her. What most surprised you about your time with her before this very important vote? 
I'm not sure if it surprised me, but, but what impressed me was how, despite all the pressure, despite all the attention, despite taking the back stairway up and down to the Senate chamber to avoid the media, uh, she, she never stopped smiling. And I would think at a time like this, a, uh, one might expect a scowl from, now, from time to time, but she has this, uh, I don't know if you call it, I don't know, serenity or something about her that enables her to kind of glide through all this. And despite the fact that she's at the center of this storm, she at times really seems to be, at least publicly, the least affected by it. Bill Nemitz, columnist for the Portland Press Herald in Portland, Maine. Thank you so much for sharing your reporting with us tonight. My pleasure, Allison.